What is demand generation? The best definition is from Wikipedia, which is the marriage of marketing programs coupled with a structured sales process. Quite simply, it is a process that generates leads. Because there are multiple and sometimes confusing components within this stepped process, Hanley Wood has put together eight questions called the Great Eight that we ask ourselves each and every campaign in order to achieve demand gen clarity. Question number one, how does a client, that client may be you in this case, define a lead? Within each and every demand generation campaign, we must understand the true definition of a lead before we can get started. Are they top of the funnel or bottom of the funnel? Top of the funnel is a marketing qualified lead and the bottom of the funnel is a sales qualified lead. Question number two, what are the lead filters? Are they from the north, east, south, or west? Are they residential builders who design super fancy housing? Or are they commercial builders who design the office that you are sitting in now? What about any additional filters? Does the builder make over $1 million annually? Question number three, a critical one. What content or assets as we call them exist already? By this point, we learned here at Hanley Wood that we cannot procure leads without engaging content. What's engaging content you might ask? It could be a white paper, a cool and informative video on YouTube, a continuing education course, or something else that is equally as engaging and informative. Question number four, how many of those assets can be used for the demand gen campaign? Is it one, 10, or 100? This step usually requires some research that can be clarified with a simple phone call. But what if there's no content at all? Well, in that case, we can create compelling content because, you know, here at Hanley Wood, that's our bag. Question number five, what is the time frame? The standard demand generation campaign takes about 90 days, but oh my gosh, these leads are needed in four weeks. Well, that's when our audience development team is gonna say negative, Ghostwriter. Given the narrow filters on this campaign, the best we can do is a minimum of 60 days. Question number six, what is the budget? Yes, the dreaded question, faux reels. We cannot quote a campaign not knowing how much can be devoted to all of the effort and time it takes to procure leads. Question number seven, how many leads can be handled? Seriously, handing over a bunch of qualified leads does not do anyone any good if there's no one lined up to follow up with them. Question number eight, what is the follow-up process? Meaning, what happens to the leads after they've been delivered? Do they go into salesforce.com or do they sit forgotten on someone's desk? At this point, the grade eight have been answered. So what is the demand generation process? Again, Going back to step one, first we have to define the highest desired lead. Let's create an example. In this case, let's imagine a lead is defined as top of the funnel, a commercial builder from the Northeast. Step two, identify the content and determine which assets to use within the campaign. Continuing with our example, let's say our operations team starts by using the white paper as they determined it would resonate the most with the selected audience. Then, overlapping with step three, they will determine to whom in our editorially owned and operated database these assets will be distributed. This just means that the assets will be matched to the appropriate audience. Steps four and five. We promote the gated assets to the target audience through custom email channels, which then get delivered into the prospect's inbox, who then clicks, fills out the registration form, and downloads the asset. I mean, who doesn't want to download a white paper on green building? Finally, the Hanley Wood operations team filters the registration form prospects and delivers the leads that meet the client's filters. But oh my gosh, these are marketing qualified leads. What if the goal was to have sales qualified leads? Well, if that's the goal, or as previously mentioned, the definition of a lead, let me introduce the dun 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 lead nurturing process. The nurturing process can go one of two ways. Let's say, for example, we send an initial email and the prospect immediately downloads the asset. Shortly thereafter, we'll send a second thank you email that will include a synergistic second asset. If they download the second asset, we will be even more inclined to send a third asset that if downloaded, implies that the prospect is a hot lead, subsequently encouraging us to send them a fourth and final asset. This entire asset journey gets tracked and reported to the customer but almost no one will download all four assets, so let's take a more realistic approach. We send the initial email and they don't download the asset. Maybe 10 days later, we send a second email with another asset, 
that they also don't download. Three to six weeks later, it may be decided to send a third and fourth email, which may or may not result in a download, but regardless, through these multiple engagements, or the lack thereof, the type of prospect can be determined. Both routes tell us a lot about the prospect. Using this deeper profiling, we can create behavioral-based scoring, allowing us to define a prospect's level of interest, delivering only sales-ready leads to our customers. And there you go. As you just learned for yourself, the demand generation process is rather simple. So get to know it, have lunch with it, take it out on a date, be one with demand generation.